Hello, Michigan Gardeners. This is Doug at Bozard Family Farm. We're located on Verona Road, just outside of Marshall, Michigan. It's uh, Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. This is the last day of jobs that I do here at the farm until we get into March next year when I start trimming shrubs and digging perennials again. Uh, But this job we completed, these are the four rows of strawberries that were planted in 2018, and we've got those mulched and covered with straw. We had about four nights in the 20s, and that's what I usually go for, um, where it got really cold. The ground was frozen in the morning, and basically, if you get the straw on, um, you can keep the ground cold. You're also insulating the berries for a little extra protection. It's all kind of insulation in case we don't get heavy snow coverage this winter. If you get a lot of snow coverage, mulching with straw isn't as necessary, but we find the straw helps. Um, Pulling it off in the spring, I usually do it middle of April this year. I jumped the gun a little bit. We had some warm weather, and I pulled it off the first week in April, and then we lost some berries to a freeze later that month. We lost some berry blossoms, so pulling the straw off usually around middle of April, and that wakes the berries up, and they start to grow, Uh, but then you do have to protect your flowers um, either with a sprinkler system, which we don't have set up, or with row cover material, which is what we do. We pull it over the berries to protect the flowers that have formed if we're going to have a frost or a freeze late in the spring. And the last two years, we have had what I call a Mother's Day freeze. It happened either right on or right after Mother's Day, the middle of of May, May 10th, 11th, 12th, in that range. Um, These are the two newer rows of strawberries over here that I covered um, with straw and... Those are Dickens berries. That's a new variety out of Cornell. And then beyond that is another row of that's mulched, but it's perennials that we're going to dig next year. And we actually have a row way over in the distance that's perennials that we dig in the spring. And I like to put the, the, the mulch, the straw on, just to protect them in case it's a, a rougher winter and they need a little insulation. Um, over here are the beehives, two beehives. The one on the left, the bees were a bit more productive and they started to work into the third box and store honey there. I did not remove any honey uh, comb this year because I didn't want them to not make it through the winter. I think the box on the left has an okay chance of making it through the winter. Um, The box on the right Uh, There was no activity in the upper, the third box, which tells me that probably I made a mistake in not feeding the bees some sugar water uh, in August when we got dry. They really needed um, more nectar than they were getting from the goldenrod um, to make the um, honey that they would live on through the winter. So if that hive doesn't make it uh, when I check them in the spring, then I will order a new nuke, N-U-C is... Is, is a colony of, of bees and a, a queen, and I'll, I'll put those into that hive to get it started again. And I may have to order two. I'm not sure if this one's going to make it or not. Uh, when you look around the base of the beehive, you do see some dead bees. Um, when I took the class back in March, they said to expect that there would be dead bees because basically the bees are not going to all be able to survive through the winter. It's basically... Who do we need to survive? And that's what we're going to keep around to to get us through the winter. Uh, Hopefully, uh, it helps. I did um, just put in what's called an entrance reducer down at the bottom of the hive to give them a small entrance in and out, but it allows them to um, not lose as much um, heat out of the hive where they're trying to keep it warm in there. I'm going to go up to the flower garden, the perennial garden, and show you a couple of things I'm doing there. And then that'll be the last video for 2021. So in the flower garden, there are a few things that I mulch with straw. One is foxglove. Uh, These are all foxglove that seeded uh, last year or early this spring they came up, and they'll flower the following year. They're what's called a biennial. And foxglove are a great plant for shade or sun. Uh, These are growing underneath the shade of some hydrangea, but you can definitely grow them in heavier shade than that. Or you can grow them in full sun, but they're uh, 
digitalis is the Latin name for them, and really they're poisonous. So if you're looking for a deer-proof plant, the deer won't eat your foxglove, and it'll grow in a variety of conditions, like I said, flowers in June, late May, June. It's really a cottage garden favorite. Um, people really like it, but I do find that in winters where we don't have a lot of snow, the crown of the plant in here in the center in the crown where the flower is going to come out will sometimes winter kill if we get a lot of rain and ice freezing and thawing in there. So when there's snow, that's not a problem. It acts like insulation. But if we don't get a lot of snow, the prediction is this winter is going to be drier than normal. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. We've had a little snow over the past week. But I just cover those with some straw. Just flake it around. And it acts like an insulation over those plants. The other plant that I'll do that with is red hot pokers. And red hot pokers, again, are another plant Got a lot of green right now, even though we're really cold, late November, last day of November, November 30th. But red hot pokers, or nifophia, um, is another plant that, again, will winter kill down in, in the spring in particular, where those flowers are forming, and then you won't get many flowers in years, i found, where you don't get much snow. So again, I take the mulch, the straw, and I just put it all on there, just like I did on the strawberries, and I'll put it on a little thicker than that, go get another flake, and I leave it on until usually mid-April. Um, but this year, I pulled it off in mid-April, and then we were going to have the freeze April 20th and 21st, so I went back out and I, I put it back on again for a couple of nights. And I think I might have, even for that Mother's Day freeze we had, um, we've had a Mother's Day freeze the last two years where it gets into the 20s, I might have put some protection over them that night too, uh, just to make sure that they were able to flower that year. I really do like the flower a lot. Again, it's more of a June uh, flower, a cottage garden favorite again. Reds, yellows, oranges, and it does look like a, a fire poker. Um, so they call it a red hot poker. Um, but those are a couple of the plants I, I mulch uh, and I put the straw on just for a little added insulation in case we don't get a lot of uh, snow coverage. If you've got leaves and you've got a good mulching uh, lawnmower, you can run your lawnmower over those leaves, get them chopped up fairly fine and spread the leaves over them. That'll work well. If you planted mums this fall, um, planting them in the fall is always precarious. They don't always make it because they need a little more time to root in. But if you do, um, leave the old foliage on the mums and then take some straw or some leaves and push it in around uh, the crown of that plant. The, the old stems will kind of hold it in place. That acts to help to insulate the crown and it keeps the ground from freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing and, and sometimes that even heaves the plant out of the ground if it hasn't rooted in. So the straw acts like insulation and it protects um, or the chopped up leaves will act that way too. Um, so those are just a few of the things you can do in late November, early December. We've had enough cold weather now so I think it's okay to do it. And then in the spring if if you're saying, I wonder when I take, remove this stuff, that's always a gamble. Um, if you remove it too early, sometimes we get a freeze and it really hurts the plants. Other times, once you get to a certain point, it always seems like the foxgloves are able to handle some nights in the 20s. It's, you know, those real extreme colds we get in the winter uh, down below zero if we haven't got snow, snow coverage that really hurt them. Same thing for strawberries, same things for the nifophia. Uh, those are just things that I do to protect. So take care and I'll uh, talk to you next spring.